curious about what you did and we're curious about what this might mean for our future just with changes in the inflation reduction act are there new ways of doing what you did yes wait, wait are people familiar with no okay so i'll start first for games um so i've got sort of the boilerplate boilerplate uh rack down which i will uh, give you and ask questions. Uh, so both sets of our, uh, my wife and my parents died um, with, uh, particularly with my wife's parents, a lot of money that was left to us. So um, I was a college professor at UCC and my wife worked in family planning, now tapestry. So we did not make our money from social <laughs> services. We didn't make money. Uh, we inherited money from our, from our parents. Uh, and in doing so, it was like, oh my God, this is, we really need to do something with this. And we're all for redistributing wealth in a, in a way that we thought was responsible. Um, so in, in 2016, oh, let me step back for a little bit. So I, uh, when I was at GCC, I helped to start the Energy Efficiency Renewable Energy Certificate and Degree Program that was there and was flourishing at the time. In the, um, in the uh, mid, for, I think 2005 to about 2015 was its heyday. Um, and, and a number of the folks who graduated from that program, many of which had many folks at college degrees already, uh, went on to form, to work in the, in the uh, field. And a few went on to form a company, which was Northeast Solar and Health Fuel. Wow. Um, so we so the the owner was a student in my class and it was great at gcc i'd have uh, students who were academically challenged and then students who were 50 times smarter and knew more than i did and Greg garrison is one of those who knew a heck of a lot more than i did and so um uh, and greg had all these ideas percolating when he came into northeast solar and so did Moria, uh, my wife and i um so we came up with this idea to form a for-profit company, Pip and Adam Solar, consisting of just the two of us. Uh, we have no website, we have no cards, we have no brochures, but, but uh, none, of, none of that. Our meetings are at three in the morning in the bedroom. And it's like, oh, I got an idea. And she's like, oh, can I wait till morning? No, can I forget? Uh, so that's that's the advantage of a three-person corporation. Um, so, uh, and our mission is to put not solar on nonprofits whose mission we embrace. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you all know, up until and you know, and the Jack just talked about the Inflation Reduction Act, we'll talk about that in a moment. But, uh, up until recently, at least, nonprofits could not realize any tax incentives mm -hmm. from donating because they are nonprofits and they pay taxes, so, so it wasn't there. Uh, so we came up with this idea along with Northeast Solar to build a for-profit corporation with put solar up at no cost, no initial cost to the organization. We will charge them a reduced fee per kilowatt hour based on negotiation and what they're paying, what they're currently paying for the electric bill. And now we're looking at, you know, how do we negotiate that small amount when people are paying this amount? But uh, anyway, um, so... So we, we, we would enter into a purchase power agreement with these agencies, these organizations, um, for a period of six years, where they pay us a reduced rate per kilowatt hour for six years. Um, we would then bill them at a year, most of them we bill just a yearly, here's your kilowatt hour production, which we get from Northeast Solar, which has to be tracked for the next thing. Yeah. So people, that's true above board, what, what their energy uh, not their energy use was, but what the gain was, the kilowatt hour production was from, from the solar arrays. 
Um, so uh, we build them once once a year. Uh, we also get the Rex. It used to be S Rex, then it went to Smart. Now there's Rex, uh, and who knows what the future will bring. Um, and every, and it all and that that amount of money was very lucrative. If you got in start of the programs, it's gone down considerably as you get to the end of the program. And it's like you know, Rusty, why are we getting this amount? Rusty's our contact at Northeast Solar. Why are we getting that amount? It's like you know, it's national grid and ever source, and you know. I won't, won't even go there because it's been challenging working with. Why are we getting what amount? What do you mean? The, the, the amount we get per um, renewable energy mm -hmm. credit. Just, it's it's gotten less and less. It's gotten less. And you know, but then there's no, I, I can't quite make sense of, of, of it. But anyway, we get that income. We get the purchase power of uh, income. We get um, uh, the federal tax credit income. Uh, and then at the end of six years, we donate the panels in their entirety to the organizations, and we get that income, not income, but a tax credit, because it's a gift to a charitable or nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. So we sort of realize money in four different ways. Every penny that has come back to us, we put into uh, back into solar programs. Um, the Northampton Survival Center was our first program. It's for those who don't know, it's food pantry in Northampton, serves Hadley among other towns. Hadley we go to the Amherst Survival Center, which we did as well. Um, and we were able to do that. And it was really nice because uh, I'm on the board of Survival Center. My, uh, my wife is a volunteer there, so we call it, uh, Heidi, excuse me. Um, it was a lot lately. Yeah. for things having not having to do with the survival center but our own survival um and so we had this contact who was like hey we are giving pay because we really don't know what we're doing we don't know what purchase power agreement is we don't know what fair rate is we don't know how it's going to work we don't know what the legal stuff is and they were great um and this is in 2016 and now we've just turned over that system to them uh and so we may have a new legal agreement saying now you got it. Everything that happens to it is yours, and it's and the only difference is they're no longer paying you the. They no longer pay for the electricity. Correct, but and if something happens to it, they have to deal. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and uh, you know, so, uh, unless squirrels eat through the wire at the inverter, we've had that. Uh, and had, uh, tree limbs come, uh, the spear. Crashing down. So there are, there are things that can happen, all of which be theoretically, some of which would be covered. Um, so one, so this has now been turned over along with the Rex, uh, the renewable energy credit. So not only do they get now free solar, but they're getting, depending on what the rate is, the REC income coming in. So it's a very, you know, lucrative um, deal for for them. Well, especially now with solar, with oh, electric rates like, spiking. Oh, God. We're paying 50 cents a total hour, and it's just insane. Mm -hmm. Can you can you explain that? What a kilowatt hour is? No, I understand that, but... The, the price per kilowatt hour has just gone crazy. And, you know, why is that? Well, now... So just you know, make solar more important. Solar, so much more Got it, got it, got it. As the price went from what fifteen cents a kilowatt hour to like twenty two cents a kilowatt yeah, hour, and there's whatever, you know, and, that, and you have to be very careful. As I'm sure all of you know, with paying your electric bill, that the cost per kilowatt hour is part of it. I and mean, there's the, the transmission rate, and then there's the distribution. The distribution rate, and there's the solar, the renewable energy rate, and there's this, that, and the, and the client is still paying all that to the utility, and they're just paying you for the for the kilowatt, or how's that work? I'm thinking they they pay us for the kilowatt hours generated, um, and they're paying every source for the transmission. For a, yes, but I don't know if they're paying. That's a great question. Never, I never even thought about. It. Usually, the system's built big enough to cover. A lot of other costs too. No, so it depends. I mean, we've had some very small facilities, and we have 
and just did three North Hampton Public School. Mm -hmm. and they are huge. Um, uh, even the Amherst Survival Center, all of the integration, mm -hmm. you know, the, the free resources is, is, is huge. But that, that's a great question. I should know the answer. No, I'm just curious. And I, and I don't. No, I'm getting you off track. No, 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 you aren't. No, it's really, it's always fun for me to realize how much, how little I know about so many things. So, you know, my wife and I, we, we just recently worked with Northeast Solar. We redid one solar array. We have a second array on one side of our house and we redid our big one. And we, um, it's interesting because they send us a bill and it has like purchase and sale. Like here's, here's how many kilowatts you purchased. Here's how many you sold us. And they work off that number, but it's, it's very confusing. And I don't know if in the last couple of years, if some of the rates have changed, they used to figure it differently. It really feels almost like some of the math that would be done at, oh, the three county fair. When you're playing one of the games, like what? Right. Right. Just right. I, what's the number? I should very much a shell game for sure. And it makes you just go, go, oh, whatever. I can't. Yes. Well, the good news is, like February has been unbelievable. We've never had this open of a winter where we could make every day. We've made 500 kilowatts with mm. seven days to go, six days to go. Unbelievable. So we're already making money. Now I do think January was the one of the lowest because of it was cloudy every day. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it, but you're right. I'm making sense of national trying to figure out what the heck goes on in national grid and ever source of heads is is you know, I don't want to trash the utilities too much, but we we can go to this. So anyway, so uh, just to finish up this too long story, um we've done fifty installations so far. Do you say five oh? Five of okay. wow. um, We have um, one, two, three, four, five in the queue, uh, and um, and again, part of this is to redistribute our wealth. And part of the way that we also redistributed our wealth was to move to a zero net energy house and have that built for us mm -hmm. with a big solar array. So, and then the stock market has crashed. So what we inherited was not money, but stocks. So we pulled back and are now more putting for new um, projects, waiting for income to come into the business rather than supplementing it incredibly mm. amount with uh, maybe Maury's, uh, Maury's base. With, yeah. with the base. Yeah. Because we're waiting to uh, one, you put so to much money into, into yeah. this house and owns already. You know, greenhouse and, and and it's all great. I'm, I'm certainly not uh, very thankful for all that. Um, but pulling back a little bit and waiting for income to come in before we before we come. Um, this year, so we just gave Northeast Solar, and now we're going to have one, two, the next three come up at the end of the year that we will be gifting. So as we gift, then our total projects go down. We're not billing anymore, we're not getting the racks, but we're having new projects come up. Yeah. So the income should be, I think the racks would be a little bit less, but it will be less than the projects. Um, so I just so, want to make sure I understand. Yeah. So the nonprofit that you were part of this relationship yeah. with, the cost to them is what they pay you for electricity? Is what they a reduced rate for electricity and for six it. years. You install it. Yeah. And then after six years of them paying you, you're their electricity supplier then. We are another utility. They're all still hooked up to National Grid or Eversource. Right. And they still are getting that electricity at night, in cloudy days, if they're yeah, right. If it's an organization like the schools with just phenomenal electric demand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Poorly it's well. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um so at the end of six years, then the relationship ends, and so you give it to them. Yes. Wow. We are, we are done. Now, if we were to make money on this, and a lot of uh, for profits do this, they lock. Um, or, and I'm not criticizing that, but it's a great model. They lock organizations generally who are twenty year 
15 mm -hmm. to 20 year purchase power agreement at a slightly reduced um, cost per kilowatt hour that that goes up. Um, so in it fact, it sounds like a very well. It, yeah, it it depends. I mean, it, right now it is because they started it. Oh, I see. Because they're paying less for electricity. Because they've gone up. The, the the utilities have gone up so much, and now and the purchase power agreement doesn't. I guess it depends on the organization you're dealing with. So at the end of 20 them. years, same thing. Then they own it. Then they own it. And so they get about five years before they have to start replacing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I think some, some of the panels now, the efficiency is going to go down, but they're warranted for 25 years. The warranty's expired, but the efficiency, well, sure. well, we'll wait and see what the new panels are doing. Right. I mean, all that's happened since we started, or I started doing, having, you know, solar at GCC, was the prices come down, it's leveled off now, uh, the efficiency is going up, and now the panels that we have installed in our house are, I mean, we've got Jack, the 405 watts per panel, so you're getting more per space. Um, and I guess that will just get yeah, better and better. When, when I said, we had panels on GCC, you know, we worked to get up 15, 20 years ago, I don't know how long ago, and the cost was about, um, and don't quote me on this, $11 a watt, which is 11000 a kilowatt. And, and now on bigger stuff, we're paying around 3000 mm -hmm. So it's just come down considerably. Um, now, what happens now? I mean, workers are being paid better, thankfully. Um, so uh, and we have an exclusive relationship with Northeast Solar. We have confidence in their abilities. Rusty was, oh, I should come to the meeting tonight. I'm like, you know, well, you don't have to come. You don't need to do that. I know he's got a lot with you in terms of getting bids. You are, and I think we're looking at the senior center as well. Um, so what are you, now that, I mean, you had a niche yeah. before because the federal government didn't allow tax credit yeah. for nonprofits. Yeah. So now they are. So what are you guys doing now? Right. So I don't, I, I, uh, we're doing the same thing because none of that has kicked in yet. Um, so my understanding, and, and I know you folks are activists and, and, and they have a lot more knowledge, is that um, the, the way the Inflation Reduction Act, my understanding is written, is that uh, nonprofits still don't pay a federal tax. So you don't get a credit, you get a cash payment. So if the system is 100000 the IRS will give you thirty thousand dollars. I don't know when this will kick in because, to, and I just had a conversation with Rusty. Rusty, their go-to guy in Northeast Solar, and he said, "Don't know. None of this is. You know, it takes a while to hopefully the Inflation right. Reduction Act is in no, November." Or yeah, so you don't want to count on the money. No, but that's that's the way, it, which is great. So now, uh, so it's still it. You know, it's like all right. So does that negate the need for us or similar um, business? Well, no, because you still have to pay 70000 if you're a nonprofit. Yeah. It's much cheaper, but it's still, for $100, it's still, yeah. still 70000 that, for certain organizations, is completely out of their reach. Mm -hmm. And we try to deal, and the issue with us is we deal with organizations that own their own building. Mm -hmm. So there is a uh, uh, a size of organization or a wealth has these wealth of organization mm -hmm. that has the ability to manage and own their own mm -hmm. their own buildings. Um, so a lot of these you know very progressive activist organizations we love to be helping. We can't because uh, ooh, like Tapestry where my wife works, it's a huge organization, but they don't um, own the buildings. But they don't own any of the buildings. They rent, and then it gets you don't want to deal with that. I mean, that, or we just like not dealing with with renters. It's just um, Planned Parenthood, very committed to reproductive rights. They don't own their building in uh, in Springfield. Mm. What about mm. municipal buildings? Have you done yes. this with any yeah. town hall? Back or... one, one, oh, no, just one quick thing on Planned Parenthood before oh, I forget. So okay. the only time we stepped outside of the valley was to go to Worcester and do the Planned Parenthood facility there because we're very committed to Planned Parenthood. It's, it's not tapestry, but and, we're, and um, so uh, uh, municipal buildings 
in the only times we've done it has been in Northampton because we have a relationship with city councilors there and 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 the mayor now and uh, we've done uh, three schools the senior center and the Northampton Survival Center is actually owned by the city but mm. it's really not the a city building they leave uh, Northampton Survival Center leases it for a dollar a year uh -huh. and for a hundred years or oh, so. <laughs> uh, and I may have made some of that up a hundred years I know it's a dollar a year I don't know about like a hundred years um so uh um is that it for municipal buildings yes now we were approached by you guys a number a couple of years ago and and we're very committed to public libraries too it's like oh libraries what are, mm -hmm. you know what could be better than a public library now they're giving out you know the free not free stuff but the the um shared goods like our like forbes our library uh has um uh what are the great efficient stoves? Oh, the induction. Oh, yeah, the induction. Yeah. Get on the list. Yeah, I get single. Yeah. No, just, the, you know. The, you can the, rent it. You yeah. can check it out. Just check you. it out. I mean, it's, it's all the stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, single burner. So I think we would certainly con consider doing the the, um, the uh, Hadley uh, Library, not at the amount that you would want, because yeah. that goes sort of above our, our cap. And our cap would be 27, 28 kilowatts. And I think you'd get double that. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. Cause I don't think Rusty ever saw the building. I think he saw plans for the building. So Wait, we, are you saying you couldn't do as much as the library would need or use? Well, you get to pass this 25 kilowatt cap and it becomes a, a, a wash my language because we're, we're being taped here, but it's just a nightmare. I mean, it's a nightmare. Um, and don't ask me why, but okay. I don't understand it. It's and like, what kicks in at 25K? It's the no max for, then the what kicks in is that then the utility will take, I can't remember whether it's 40% or 60% of what you produce after 25 kilowatts what? or 25,000 kilowatt hours. I can't quite remember what it is. They just start, um, yeah, you can produce that, but we'll take. 60 yeah, percent you're going to use it yourself they're, yeah, they're still it. taking it is my understanding yeah. okay so that has to do with net meter yes yes okay that's it thank okay. you yeah okay um well, and it's not meter, that we're net metering is set up so that if you you're never using what you produce and you're never producing what you use because yeah. you're, it's summertime or wintertime your use is always different the net metering allows you to in the summertime Create a surplus, yeah. uh -huh. and then in the winter time you draw on that yeah. instead of having to sell it back to the utility at a wholesale price. They're going to reserve it for you, yeah. and they're and they're going to give it to you at, at your at, at the wholesale at, at, at the wholesale price. Exactly. So, so you never get a ch in the summer if you're cranking and you're not using anything, so you don't need air conditioning, or whatever. Um, your utility bill doesn't your your utility bill reflects your production. But if you're exceeding production, your meter sense is going backwards. You're not getting, oh, here's a here's a utility going to pay you money. They will never pay you money. Anything. I well, in, in Connecticut, they used to do a once a year reconciliation check to really? get even the accounts. Well, that's what I heard. Well, um, but in Massachusetts, it's different. You can bank it in the summer and then use it yeah. up in the winter. Yeah. You can exactly. move or if you change the name of the account, you can get money back. Well, so just continue the there's the shell game. Oh we're here. Yeah. Now we're play their game too. Yeah, well two two residents. So Brian, bringing you up to date, I yeah. have heard that if it hasn't gone out yet, that there is a request for a proposal for this building to get solar. Either it's the senior already senior. out or going out soon. Um, and it was good because a while ago they thought they had it ready, but there were a couple of important details that they didn't have ready. This also has a metal roof. So that's, that's one. one. It, this has a metal roof, which is a great advantage. Standing seam metal. Yeah. When it comes to the library, there are some issues with the roof asphalt shingles that they have to fix before they can actually put on solar. So that's what's holding that project up. Mm -hmm. um, Sure would be great. Well, to agree to fix. Yeah. 
the um, contractor and the community sort of they haven't come to a final agreement. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by now they have. Oh, it's been going on. It's been long. it's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. um, we have a beautiful elementary school with an, a roof that's generally facing south. We have another high school. Um, you know, with two relatively recent roofs. With mm. no. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Not Hopkins, I don't think, right? Well, and you know, the other one was built in '93. I don't know if they maybe they fixed the roof on the elementary. We do their upgrades first. We have yeah. taken ourselves out of the roof business, yeah. yeah, and it's all about roofs, whether it's you know metal or shingles or um, uh, what's what's a really bad one for solar. Uh, Oh, slate or something. Is it slate? Yeah. Yeah. This right, slate. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. oh, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if he's capped at 25 kW, that, that doesn't help leave a us municipal building very for any, any really municipal building. Does it? Yeah, sometimes you can't get much more than 60, 870 panels on, depending on the build. Right. On the building. So that's part of it. Some of the roofs are, you know, to get like, and and you know we were dealing with um, three of the elementary schools that have were roof ready, and the amount of crap that's on top of the roofs. <laughs> well, they're flat. They're flat with all of these huge ventilation systems. Oh and yeah, production systems and and uh, I don't know what else, but it just takes up a lot of real estate on the on the roof. So we can't always do you always put it on roofs well, no one thing we've thought about no. is like a canopy over this part yeah it's considerably more expensive canopies are great we just had an UMass women's basketball fans for the game <clears throat> excuse me on Sunday <laughs> they've won 12 in a row in case you don't know that they're 23 and 4 they're like my next door neighbor right across the street is the coach no, Tony Murphy, yeah. really. Yeah. Sorry, that guy Murphy. should go on yeah. uh, this Saturday, four o'clock, last home game, senior mm -hmm. night, blah, blah blah. Okay, where were we? Oh, they have a canopy for the Mullins, yes. you see, yeah, there. but it's very expensive. Um, and I don't know, I think you're paying uh, another 30 percent in or something, and again, just, just for the steel infrastructure, and all yeah, that, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, they've got round do you do we, we've done um. Let's see. With all, with very few exceptions, we've done it on the roofs. It's the easiest. It's the closest to the electric line. It's just there's no trenching. There's no this or that. Uh, Arcadia. Have you been to to the wildlife Park? sanctuary? Mm -hmm. No. The um, I'm sorry. In East Hampton. Uh, yeah. Arcadia. 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 In East Hampton. Yeah. It's a tracker. It's our low tracking system, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, just roots in Green. Yeah. I don't know just that. That's a ground mount. What's it just roots. Just roots. Um, uh, why am I forgetting? It's a service net farm in in Hatfield. Mm -hmm. And a Prospect Meadow Farm is a ground mount. And um, it's one, two, three. It's a ground um, mount. It's a lot less expensive than building canopies. Yeah. Have you done any work with churches or synagogues? We have made the executive decision to stay out of that rabbit hole, excuse me for the word rabbit hole, I'm putting this on a fence. Um, it, it opens it up to uh, us making decisions based on churches that we would rather not make. Oh, I see. And I see. it's like, oh, well, we're not going to do a um, the Baptist church, but we are going to do a Unitarian church. Right, gotcha. And then it's like, gotcha. God, that's really gotcha. weird. Um, gotcha. <laughs> and it's not that we don't have enough projects to right, choose right, from. Gotcha. And I think we, you know, at some point, solar is solar. And whether it's on a whatever building it's on, it's still solar. So it's still doing the exact same thing right. for climate change. And that's what our obsession is. So that would it matter? Right. Gotcha. But yeah. So, and we just got another request from Amherst. Unitarian Church, please, 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 and like you know, just we love to, but we were just not. I mean, yeah, and it's easy, and it's easier to do that, particularly if we have a lot of, and there are a lot of organizations we haven't touched yet, uh, and municipals. You know, if we did, if you were ever interested, we would we have the conversation about, say, the the um, the library here. Um, that would be our first municipal building outside of Northampton, mm -hmm. but we haven't done anything in Hadley. 
So we're also trying to say, well, what, you know, and can we do something in towns that are very visible that the towns like? And then people say, oh, wow, look at that. There's solar there. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, we, we encourage signage. We just went down to the, um, to the Springfield Quadrangle the other day, and they finally put up signs about the solar that is on the History Museum and the mm -hmm. Science Museum that we bought, which, is, oh, which okay. is nice. Yeah, so try and get signage. Arcadia's got a nice sign right in front of theirs to use it as an educational model. Mm -hmm. I'm digressing to what I was trying to talk about. So our two schools might be candidates for you. Yeah, and know the issue again is we've scaled back a little bit and and again, we've got five, four or five in the queue. Depends on HEC. People know HEC, the Hampshire Educational Collaborative. Yeah, I think it is. is the HEC Academy is the school for kids who are struggling in, to be in school. Um, and they've approached us and they're very excited. There are roof issues there and we haven't even done site visits. So, it, but but in, in the queue now is Redgate Farm. People know Redgate Farm is a great place in Asheville. Um, Crimson, we're trying to do as many nonprofit farms because that connection is so great. Crimson and Clover in Northampton, we're doing another second array. They're expanding. Um, the Florence Civic Center um, is that the Bombex? No, the Civic Center is right on Main Street. There, as you're, there's that really odd it's intersection yeah, right yeah, past Miss yeah. Flows yeah, as yeah. you're going toward Danville, yeah. and the Civic Center is there. And there's these around that 25 hitting minimum. By doing like two systems for that farm, you, you, you can if there are two different electric, if there are two different meters. Mm. It's all based on meters. Mm. <laughs> so you said almost do that here, right? Um, you're asking the wrong. One nice thing about um, one thing is is getting older. I forget. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why well, are you having a <laughs> These great questions. I don't know the answer. The only thing, we have enough confidence in our relationship with Northeast Solar to allow them to initiate a lot of this, a lot of this stuff. In fact, I, I don't go to that many of these meetings. Rusty does. And then he can answer every, everything to that, <laughs> uh, all the technical stuff. Um, but so in terms of all putting in another business. meter, that's not the prerogative of you. Or the senior center, my understanding, it is the utility who does that. Mm -hmm. And they'll say yes and they'll say no. Oh, why well, are you trying to put on more solar? How dare you? Because that, right. I'm sure that's not going in their heads, but it, no, no I don't. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Um, but uh, um, utility folks, if you're listening to this meeting, love you. Just love you. <laughs> love you. Um, so yeah, other other questions? Well, it was interesting because 20 years ago when we built our house, we were working with Western Mass Electric uh -huh. and they were very interested. They yeah. loved the idea of having sort of house-based systems yeah. because they were strained for capacity. Yeah. But now with this Eversource world, it's very different. Yeah. Yeah. It very different mindset. Now we're more competition yeah. than well, that. Yeah. So the the you know one thing I asked Rusty is can you know um, we've gotten a lot of inquiries of, of you know could people help us out with um, with our business mm -hmm. and the real answer really is uh, no because you know we're the ones that get the federal tax credits we're the ones that get the gifts we're the ones that that bring in money through the purchase power agreement and the recs to get other money coming in would put this and I'm the one doing doing most of it. My wife has, has writes the checks and I and I and I bill and, and to have other parties involved. We just don't want to go there. I mean the beauty of our model is there are two of us and we can do whatever we want whenever we want without yeah. without having to, to get difficult questions asked of us <laughs> yeah. uh, by well meaning people. <laughs> I, I no, but if somebody else was helping you then would they want a cut of what you're bringing in? Well, except we're not, we're losing money on yeah. every mm -hmm. deal. So it's like, you know, do you want to give money to us and then not get all of that back? It would just be very complicated. Now, could other people replicate it? Yes. Um, the issue is that we have a lot of inherited wealth mm -hmm. and that we're, and we are redistributing that. 
Um, could you form a for-profit? What are the costs of forming a for-profit? Yeah. It's five hundred dollars a year to register, mm -hmm. and that's and then the legal issues of coming up with the purchase power agreement, and then the legal issues of coming up with the gifting agreement, which is which is a lawyer, um, and uh, and that's it. So that's it's not like you, know, you have to do you have to follow taxes. So and, and I can't do taxes. I mean, I couldn't possibly do the taxes. So that's another six hundred a year. So if you were doing it just for one project, yeah. you formed a for-profit just for one project, it was just your money. You're, you're paying out quite a few thousand dollars to make it happen. Now for us, given the scale, it 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 it's okay. It, it works. Um, and I don't like the process of giving five hundred to the state, but you know, <laughs> now we're because uh, leadership insurance. Say it again. I think that's the biggest subsidy that any government ever provided was that five hundred dollars. Yeah, because it allows you to set up a corporation. That's it. Means that you personally are not liable for anything. No, that's the, the LLC. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's the, it's the totally. biggest giveaway in the world. No, you're you're absolutely right, and I should not. I uh, thank you. Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, could you set it up now as a as a nonprofit? I mean, and then I was talking to Rusty. Well, if in fact the Feds are now uh, uh, um, allowing this thirty percent to nonprofits. Could it go to a nonprofit corporation that was not the library or not the senior center? Mm -hmm. That are, that so then now the system. I mean, we're looking at twenty eight kilowatts for the library at about seventy five thousand dollars. So now what's thirty percent of seventy five? Is that twenty twenty five? So that's twenty. So that's fifty thousand, right? Yeah. yeah, something like that. So fifty thousand dollars. Now you, you know, just by forming, and could the money come to the nonprofit rather than to the municipality? Mm -hmm. um, and Rusty was unclear about the because all this is new stuff with the inflation reduction act. But that might be that might be worth. And then and then you would raise fifty thousand. It would go into that if you had if you know you have to you're again you're having to have the purchase power agreement and, and I don't know what it costs to incorporate a nonprofit, but it's probably maybe the same. I don't know. Well, yeah, establishing a nonprofit is a whole other animal. Yeah, oh, oh, much more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you have to have yeah. more direct filing the five hundred dollars for an LLC is a brilliant thing. <laughs> establishing yeah, a nonprofit is much much. Well, that's why we did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we did take right. the federal tax credits. That was that was our, and also we had a lot of help with um, Northeast Solar. We did all the all the like we paid legal fees and all that stuff. Uh, but it's something worth pursuing. I mean, I you know, mm. I mean, I'm assuming that um, there are well-meaning people in Hadley who have money who would love nothing better than to donate or put money in or hmm. to do something where they could get at least some of that money back. Yeah. Oh, you mean them performing the you uh, them as in you? Yeah, well, I don't have <laughs> right, but there are some people some people that that do. I mean, I can't imagine that there aren't. I mean, we're disappointed in in, in coming up with this model. We thought, oh my God, we're gonna put it out there to the world and we try to publicize, it. and then people are gonna flock to us and say, yeah, yeah, and it really hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you say you're so sure there are people and no. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's been Maybe. that's been the only disappoint only disappointing thing. That and the and dealing with utility bullshit has been challenging. But other the fact that you know, and we had one one woman did this in Connecticut and I think she had a lot of money and I and we lost track but but uh, she's doing quite a bit down there. And we've had other inquiries and given them you know these same same spiel and said, Well help you do whatever you want to do and um and and we lost track of that. So, I mean, it's a cool model to be replicated, and whether it's being replicated or not, I can't imagine it isn't. But you know, I, I don't know. So, so when you replicate the model, when you say that it's being replicated, so you, you go and talk to folks and tell them about what you're doing, and then and what, then they kind of run with it. Yeah, it's not that difficult mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you got the money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, again, for here, five hundred dollars, you can figure out it. I think it's best to have a if you're going to do multiple projects, 
to have one solo company mm -hmm. that you have confidence in that does good work. Rather than dealing with multiple companies now, because, you know, um, Northeast Solar did a lot of work in coming with purchase power agreement. Mm -hmm. And they really don't want to say, oh, here's another company. We'll, we'll give you that purchase power agreement that they spent a lot of money on. on no, I'm, I'm thinking that that could be a, a form of revenue for that's you. That's true. You, you yeah. could, so you could package yeah. that and sell that. But anyway, that's yeah, yeah. Really to think about. Personally, invoice the customers for the kilowatts. Yes. Can I talk to you after this meeting? Sure. I don't know. I'm just really curious how that works. Yeah. I, I have a similar situation. But... Well, I could do it right now. It'll take it, it won't take long. I mean, I, I went to the internet and said, how do you do an invoice? And they came up with this. I know. How do you arrive at the price? And the solar tell you the, 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 the kilowatt hour production is, is recorded by the utilities. It's one line on the bill. It's, it's one line. Now we get, it's a, a monthly line. Right. Now, we get Northeast Solar provides us with the daily amount and tracks that. And then just so what I do is I go to, to now to Greg and say, Greg, it, it'll be uh, March 1st soon. March 1st, these four, five, or six organizations I'm billing. Give me the kilowatt hour production. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. And then Northeast Solar provides that to me. I don't go to the utilities, I don't go to the yeah, we're surviving. So you just look at the at the automatic tracking system that yes. they have. Yeah. And then which has been a nightmare recently because they upgraded this 5G and everyone didn't have 5Gs and then no one is recording. And we're still getting um you know, Hampshire uh Hampshire Power does our SREC uh um aggregation and and selling. And they're like, these systems aren't reporting because they're not reporting. It's like, why aren't they reporting? Why are they using so, the new in phase or oh whatever? yes, and yeah. very and sort of jump up from that has been but, okay. so once you get that number from the installer, yeah. How much per kilowatt do you bill? Like, how do you arrive at that number? It is negotiated at the uh, um at the signing of the purchase power deal before the signing. So it's fixed for five years. Six years. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does not vary. Okay. We we could do that's nice. Yeah, for you to not have to pay. To, you know, to right? Down. Yeah, and again, but it's nice for the entity. Oh yeah, also. yeah, yeah. So yeah. 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 Right, you can no. really set set yeah. your utilities. Yeah, yeah. 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 they know what and you're going to pay for. Um, could we make more money by tying it? Yeah, yeah. we could have a rider saying as the, you know, attach it to, but you know. If, you're not in it for the, you're not in it. It for the money. No. Yeah. But if if that was if you were replicating this, then there are there are ways to and and uh um my kid our, our our two kids are very supportive of what we're doing with their inheritance. Um, <laughs> but they do say, why don't you lock them in for a longer purchase power agreement and why don't you charge more per kilowatt hour? And we're like, well, we, I, you know, I'm 60, I'll be 68. I don't want to spend this where I'm trying to just type and not being able to even type. I mean, at some point, there's going to be an end game here, and they don't want any to do it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and we could get, and, and it's also, I mean, we're trying to provide a service to these wonderful organizations, mm -hmm. that, um, like the, you know, the senior center here. We did the senior center in Northampton, and, it's, you know, it's, you walk right in, and there's the array. Mm. And soon there will be signage. It's only taken two years or something, but <laughs> there will be signage at some point. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, some things I've learned about solar is like the new system we have is just so much more efficient yeah. than the, the one from 20 years ago. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. It's like yeah. almost three times more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable yeah. with what we're making. So this is a really good time. It's sort of solar technology. I do get concerned. You know, I've heard other people say it. Oh, all the panels are coming from China. I, I don't know if that ever comes up in any conversations that you have. I know it comes up with Northeast Solar and we just, again, we allow them to make decisions that we are not micromanaging what product they use, how they put it up, what their business, their, their B corporation, that's that's what we know and we know the players. Uh, where they're getting their panels, Rusty talks about that and I tend not to 
Like you, you do what you need to do. If we're going to go with American panels and. So when you were working with the schools uh -huh. and they said you're buying from Northeast Solar, did you get any pushback of no, you need three bids or anything like that? Or no? um, again, I I allow myself to not take part in those things. Okay. We had meetings. The senior center was the first real project we did. And that was a couple of years ago. And it took quite a while to go through it, because it came in under. I think a hundred thousand for each. You did not have to. There were bidding stuff that was weird okay. that yeah. allowed them to. And if they're going to get, and they could go get three bids, and people would be like, "I bid on this. Why would you possibly bid on something that you're going to lose? Yeah, lose money on? Because you know, we're saying here's a, here's the proposal. Outbid us. Go ahead. You can. That's great." You know, but no one, there's no possible. Because they wouldn't make any money. They lose money. Yeah. We lose money. So, and, and we know we're losing money. We're out <laughs> to make money. We're right. out to get solar up right. and to redistribute our wealth and to sleep at night and to, you know, and to, you know, feel good about what we're, doing. About what we're doing. Yeah. Except for and when that, you're inspired at three o'clock in the morning. Say it again. I said, except for when you're inspired at three o'clock. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, yeah. So what was the question? Was your question there? Oh, um, Jack had asked about the requirement of three bids, right? And I, don't, and I don't know. And I, every municipality is different. I think. I mean, there are state laws that you have to go yeah. by. But nobody's gonna outbid me. No, right. So we would never worry. But we would never worry about that. Or even. But again, the only the only municipality we've engaged in is uh, is Northampton, mm -hmm. and we've lived there forever. And we know our city councilors and we know the mayor. So, you know, we have those ends because it has to go. Oh, actually, let me see. It had to go through all the purchasing agents and go through city council. It had to go through the mayor. Then it had to go to the state because on a public school to lease, we essentially are leasing the roof for six years. Right. A lease requirement needs to be approved by the State Board of Education. Like, right? seriously? You know, and that delayed things for forever. So I mean, this school project, we just got done this fall. And, it'd be, uh, and those were capped at 25? Those we capped, yeah. And 25 means like 28 or 29. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. the, yeah. The one we were looking at for the, for the senior center was 28. And then that's about 65 panels. Do 20, 20 kilowatts divided by 405 watts per panel is 50, about 65. Do the math. Yeah. No? <laughs> it's called 70 panels or something. And the panels aren't small. Yeah. So, so that's a pretty big system. Yeah. yeah. It's a really big system. Yeah. Did I mean, that give them enough? Oh, no. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, it, you know, these again, the schools just have these enormous mm -hmm. energy demands. And you look at the amount of refrigeration, the air conditioning in the summer for those that are air conditioned, at least there's some offices that are. Mm -hmm. um, Which school is this? We did Bridge Street, Bridge. Um, Ryan Road, and Leeds. Yeah. We did not do Jackson Street, which we dearly want because our children went there, but the roof is old and mm -hmm. we can't do it. The high school, the roof is old. It's got very, very old um, panels. What were the panels for? Very small amount, like seven kilowatts or eight kilowatts uh, or something. And also the roof is very suspect. So we're waiting. I think our, 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 we'd like to do all the schools, but right now we're holding there. Like, there's there's there. like the, but there used to be a lot of companies out doing PPOs on residential. Uh -huh. And I don't know if they still, I haven't been right. talking, but are, my question is, are, are they ever doing big projects like municipal projects through PPOs? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like the Northampton land, landfill has, what is it, three and a half megawatts or something? So landfills are a big thing now. And I, and I, to be honest, I don't, I've carved out my little niche of what I know and what I've given mm -hmm. myself permission not to know. And I can't remember, and most of it is what I should myself wish. Um, and I can't okay, remember so what the what the agreement is. I don't think after 20 years the city will be gifted that. 
No. I don't know. I don't know what these. I'm thinking of the big ones are these. You know, these. At least in our area, it's been these landfills, which are just a great site here. So yeah, we have a big landfill in yeah, town. I sure do. Good place. And has the cap, obviously. Yeah, but there's. I think so. Yeah, but there's land surrounding it. Same thing with sewage treatment plants. Hmm. Um, we were looking at the water treatment plant in Northampton, which is actually in Haydenville, uh, where we get our water. There's the the uh, reservoir there, and then there are wells. Uh, so those are good, often good sites too for municipal stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the night, the nice thing with schools is, um, you know, you can get signage, use it as an educational program. Yeah. And the and the kids like that, um, yeah. they can't see it. It's, you know, the, the, the Haydenville water is like way higher than Northampton, and yeah. the Quabbin is way higher than Boston, and so they have to put reducers to reduce the pressure on yeah. those. Which is like a turbine. Yeah. And so I know a guy who owns some land near between the Quabbin or somewhere in between where he owns that break and he makes a fortune wow. on. So maybe that could be your With next. With the Michael like, Hydro? your next like, <laughs> business. Yeah. Is to like get Northampton to to put in a yeah. a break that makes, yeah. you know, energy out of that. Yeah. 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 And it's constantly going. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Hmm. Well, they just start. Did you see in the paper today? Northampton's hiring a climate action director. Yes. Huh. Yeah. That was a big, big news. Been going on for. Um, They've set aside what, three million for well, climate action. Well, three million came in. I don't know how they got the three million. Well, right. Was it ARPA money or no, something like ARPA that? Was it, ARPA was it just made it was... sound like it was coming from like, you know, property taxes and stuff. I don't. Well, I imagine there would be an outcry over money. that, given what some of the other necessities are. Idea. Right. Um, again, what I hmm. what I've done with climate stuff is I have a few things that I do, and then I. Just tune it out. I tune out those. I don't tune it out. I'm glad. That, I'm so glad that people like you are very active in in towns, and I'm not active in town. I do this radio show. I do a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Uh, Valley Free Radio. No, I do on WHMP. Um, I do half hour science and sensibilities. We do a lot of. Cool. Mm. Uh, cool. That's great. Yeah, it's really fun. Thirty yeah. minutes a thirty minutes a week. And some of the people that interview climate activists, a lot of climate activists, two 10 year olds I did, 10 year old girls. Oh, oh nice. my God, it was so great. <laughs> a lot of kids, regular kids, and see a lot of active kids in there, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We follow um, uh, uh, Ali, I can't remember who. Jerome, or something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've interviewed, I interviewed just once, but I have her coming on in March again, just following her Celtics debut. <laughs> I mean, she, I'm unbelievable. I mean, she is a, and it's like talking to an activist with 50 years of experience. Can I tell you one quick amusing story? Yeah, she has, you know, so she's a mountain view farmhouse kid in Ollie, in East Hampton. Ben and Lizzie, you remember Ben and Lizzie? Yeah, she's sure. Well, she's, she's, um, I, I can't remember how old she is now, maybe 16. She's, She's almost 16. Almost 16. Is their their, their, their kid? Yeah. <laughs> she's homeschooled and she's uh she and she to GCC. Is she, she going to GCC? She's been going to GCC since she was 12. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of like Amazing. I don't doubt it at all. Yeah. But but I interviewed two two ten. We were at the farmers at the Tuesday market in Northampton, mm. and there was a table selling flowers. So it's like, God, it's good. And there were two 10 year old girls selling cut flowers and the trinkets that they had made out of, you know, I mean, like purses and just little knickknacks. So, like, oh, buy some cut flowers. And then, and all the money going to 350 dollars. So, like, oh my goodness, who thought of that? Like, well, we did. We wanted to do something. So, I talked to one of the moms, like, you know, can I interview your daughter? She's, well, let me ask them. And they were all, oh, what's the, uh, nervited was the word. Nervous. nervous and excited. Oh, was nervous. <laughs> so that was their way. So I had these two 10 year old girls yeah. in the studio, and it, you know, it's there's an engineer and they're 
you know, microphones and there's a wall of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it can be, or someone like me who gives a shit, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I mean, I don't care if I make mistakes, it makes me good radio. But uh, the gas can be very intimate. So anyway, and and one of the and they're on one they're on little stools and she's just twirling around. And the parent figure was there trying to hold her so that she could speak in the But as soon as she speak, twirl, twirl, twirl. <laughs> and she acted like a ten year old, or maybe yeah. nine year old. And then the other ten year old acted like a sixteen year old or eighteen year old. So one of my questions was, um, uh, what do you think should be? I can't know. What, what you know? What what do you think are things to do about climate change and the 10 year old acting like the 18 said well you know, we'll start with banning straws in the cafeteria we can go into big offshore wind and it just sounded like a grown-up speaking and the other 10 year old said shop at goodwill <laughs> i said well why well we'll get you know we'll get used clothes why buy new clothes we'll get really better deals on used clothes. makes sense <laughs> and another question follow-up question was what what would you do if you were president of the united states <laughs> and the 10 the 10 year old one in 16 comes up with his elaborate climate resilience and climate change and the other 10 year old says make more good wills <laughs> i feel so simple it was just <laughs> and it was, it was dull. <laughs> it was dull. and i'm like oh my god don't cry the crying in the radio is good it's good radio too <laughs> anyway oh. so that was it was very cute mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so how else can I, so our, our offer is if you're interested in, in re having that discussion of the 28 or so kilowatts on the, um, uh, on the library, which does have that perfect route. I mean, that is just facing pretty much nearly sad. Yeah. yeah. And it's like begging. It's just begging. Go past it's been begging for a few years. Soul or soul. <laughs> uh, I mean, certainly right. now, if we were to do it again, we have much less money coming in. We wait for that money coming into us. We've got four in the queue and then waiting to see what heck does. What the heck will heck do? Um, our mm -hmm. four is again, Crimson Redgate, Gordon Civic Center. Oh, Mount Grace Land Trust is building a new building in, and we're trying to get in some of these tougher towns. I think they're in um, Orange or um Athol. Mm. I can't remember where the headquarters mm -hmm. are. And we've done two in Orange and I think we're nothing in Athol. So it'd be really nice to mm. again trying to get into the some of these I want to say tougher towns, but you know, towns with less disposable mm -hmm. uh income. And Mount Grace does great great work. Um so that's what did I say now one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then there's ha hack and we don't know. We haven't done a site visit mm -hmm. on on those two. So if we were to commit to uh the, the library, it's unclear when that would happen. Yeah. Because we want money to to come yeah. Yeah, right. And you know, part of me as given some of my feelings about money is when the stock market goes down, I'm like, yeah, stick it to them, <laughs> make it go down. Then part of me is like, oh. The stock market's going down. Well, we still have it means we can't do more so. So it's like a complicated relationship with this. Many people have with money that mm. we have in ways that I'm not complaining about. Mm -hmm. um, but uh so what the timetable would be, I I don't know. It depends on heck. You know, we have enough money now to cover three of the projects, Redgate. Crimson Clover and the Civic Center. Um, we don't have enough for Mount Grace, but that they're, they're building a new building. It's not starting until April. Uh, grounds break, ground break is in April, and then we can't get in. We be North be Seoul until the summer, uh, sometime. Um, so, uh, so again, this would be the end of the count of the calendar year at the earliest, probably, because we're looking at seventy five thousand, which is um, it's got to be a good price. Uh, Northeast Solar, as I think uh, many solars, I mean, they're, they're putting into their calendar now for July mm -hmm. because everyone is jumping on solar. Yes. It's the good news of electricity, you know, $5 million a kilowatt hour. 
people are like, I don't, you know, I want it, I want it now. Like, what? We can't get more until the middle of the summer. So, you know, it's, I think most, you know, if you call a solar company to say, oh, yeah, we can come and start tomorrow, it's like, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. Why mm. is that? Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, what would that process even be? If to move forward with the library, right? The, the, the roof Ooh, they have to get the roof issue right. reconciled. Okay. And it's been big, which is really too bad. I was on that building committee and there were a number of us really lobbying for a metal roof. And at the time, we didn't have that money. But now, but now they're going to have a big expense no matter what. It's mm -hmm. just a shame. Okay. Yeah. I just wish to get on with it, whatever. Just I mean, a builder should, it's a brand new building. The town should be paying for that. Right. Mm -hmm. You would think they would make it right. And who knows how bad it really is. It's just a small area, I guess. Is it They're just, leaking? huh? It's leaking. No, I don't think it's leaking. I think there's some, it runs, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's a metal plate put there or something. Because yeah. the water's sitting somewhere? Or what's no, it, it's it runs shit. across this one area more than they thought it would. Just with how the two different pitches come together. Like, hit the, so it's gonna wear out. And I guess the town wants the roofer or the builder to fix it. There. But you're right. I mean, they're responsible, and this has been going on for a while. Well, it does sound like a design flaw. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, who designed it? The architect. It seems that's the problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're going yeah. around and around pushing the pay for so. it, I guess. Yeah. Well, and that's why it, it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how this building plays out with solar. Also, if if we just went for it as a community, as the library group, however they do it, they could go with more than 25 kilowatts, right? They could, but it, you have to wait. It, it, you go into a rabbit hole over 25 kilowatts okay. with the... Um, now, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that hasn't changed. Yeah. So they, what, it went up from 15 to 25. So it's 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 better now, but um, there's still this radical, which I don't quite understand. It depends on what your usage is. I mean, if you're if you're ex that would be a conversation with Northeast Soul. Right. Mm, I'll stay out of that. Well, it's interesting too because I my understanding is they went with all electric heating and appliances and all mm -hmm. of that. So this is they being senior center or yeah, library, library. library. Yeah, which is great. I mean, it's but um, now one that I again knowing that I was coming tonight, I said, so Leslie, what if we put up twenty eight kilowatts and then you fundraised for other stuff? Could we do that? And the answer is yeah. Right. You know, we we put up the and then you know mm -hmm. will people. People want to see more. A lot of people commit to money if they want to see. They want to see solar up, and whether the utility is taking it or not, it's still solar. It's up. It's still right. you know, it's still it's like, still solar. It's still solar. They can burn and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you can have that argument. You know, we will be funding the utility and getting them to come up. Say, oh, we already take sixty percent of what you produce when you put it up. Like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, you know, I maybe it's 40%. Point. I can't remember. It's 60, 40. I can't remember how that works. But, yeah. who knows? And, I, and again, you know, I, the way legally and philosophically, the way they're doing it is that they're giving you this incredible deal under 25 kW. They're giving you the retail value of your electricity instead of wholesale for energy that you're putting on the grid, which is basically. Wholesale. Are they still doing that? Because I thought up up to twenty five. This twenty five million. So they're saying over that, we're not going to be so generous. Basically. Oh, I see. That's how. That's the rationale. It's still screwed up, and they and <laughs> and we shouldn't we shouldn't be building solar on buildings for less than they use. We should be building on buildings for more than they use. And when I did my barn, I put seven times the amount of panel yeah. on it than we use. Yeah. And Same thing with our that's house. That's because it was before that rule kicked in. Mm -hmm. And oh, and that's the sensible thing to do because there's huge efficiencies to like 
putting your scaffolding yeah. up and getting mm -hmm. the engineer. Exactly. But it's like, it's the same damn cost. We throw a few more panels up and yeah. meet the needs of the building. The more the dry, yeah. that's what I will lower the cost for a while. Yeah. Just like anything. Huh. Yeah. 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 Well, this is definitely a topic for us to explore. What can we do? Whether it's on the dump or on the buildings. We can see if we can move any solar further. Yeah, the ground mounted, like on the dump. Which you have to do for dump. <laughs> Does that work when it's on land like that instead of on a building? You stick a post in the ground. You no, I know that. I mean, <laughs> who, gets, who gets to use, well, then that electricity just goes to the grid and. There's no net metering there because there's no use, right? Unless you can designate it to the town. Can you? Yes. Yeah. So we could ground mount solar on the dump on the old landfill yeah. Yeah. and have it go to town hall and it would or be go to 25 feet of yeah. Right. Any of those. Like yeah. 100. Yeah. And then it, it's so profitable at that point. It doesn't matter that you're just getting pennies instead of nickels and dimes. You're saving so, it's so it's much just, less. It's, it's just so much more efficient. So that makes sense to, if our to pursue that. Um, water treatment, that's probably our biggest electricity. Oh, no, it's huge. Pump water. I'm assuming there are some places that are not grabbing oh, that yeah. have to be pumped mm -hmm. and pumping any water. So there are 15 pump stations around town, maybe more. That there's mm -hmm. quite a few. Yeah. And then the, you have your own sewage treatment plant. Yeah, and that's and sewage treatment is just constant electricity going. So if we had ground mounted solar, then maybe you we'll stick a twenty five kW at every one of those pumping stations. So still wouldn't still use more than that, probably. Mm -hmm. Possibly. That's money. Yeah, yeah. I think we're set, Alex. If you want to stop, did you close the. Did you? Yeah, close it. No, no, no. I think now we're set upon your arrival here. Uh, did you already end the meeting? No. no, no. I'm saying you have to close the meeting, so you have to make a motion to close it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would like to make a motion to close this.